Hello and welcome to uh, And Everything In Between. I am your host, uh, Joe Brace, aka Scorn, and uh, we're to talk about the gaming industry and uh, everything in between. And uh, this is uh, Tony. Hey, that's me. And uh, we're joined here again by uh, Dan, my bro. Every, every month? Every certain time period to be discussed at some point, maybe. So basically, Daniel's <laughs> been on the show twice in the space of... Um, I feel like it must be month. three months. It feels it feels much longer. But nobody in the world knows that we filmed seven episodes of the podcast apart from <laughs> yeah. Because don't, Toby's don't. been really busy with exams. Yeah, so. busy yeah. with exams, part timer. Yeah, can you explain some of part-timer? your physics to us, Toby, quickly? What yeah. quantum physics and thermal mechanics? Uh, not off yes, the top of my head. No. Wants to hear about that? Afraid not. What was that question you were getting confused oh, you were like, yeah. calculate the Earth's entropy? No, no, no. All right, okay. It was, um, you have a 100 degree metal bar, 100 degree Celsius, and you place it into a river at ambient temperature. What's the entropy change of the entire universe? Six. I, I, I said to him, you ever get stuck on a maths question, just put two. It <laughs> yeah. Right. Six it doesn't want, no, you don't understand. There is no... Because like, it, if it's one plus one... It's not going to be a, a, a constant. Some delta coefficient. It's, oh, it's not going to be an integer. Sorry, it's it's going to be a, a constant right, right, or something. Right. T- Tony, apart apart from physics, have you been watching or playing anything this week? <laughs> Perhaps a physics-based uh, game. Well, as you, you well do know, play Joe. Space engineers a lot. I've pl- I'm still playing space engineers, but as you well know, Joe, we've uh, got the Minecraft server up. We're playing a lot of Minecraft. Yeah. So about. A- I feel like it was a year yeah, ago. Yeah, a year ago. Uh, I wanted. So, on earlier podcasts, I was playing single player modded Minecraft, and I said to Tony, yeah. can we set up a server? And then a couple yeah. of months ago, he said, yeah, yeah, we'll get one set up. And then finally, after Toby <laughs> meticulously making his own mods because he didn't want to use anyone else's, setting up his own custom server, we finally got it working so we can actually play on it. So, yeah. you're, you're basically playing Toby Graph now. We call it's called Devon as a place on Earth. <laughs> yeah. what? That's the unofficial name of the mod pack. It's like a classic song. Ooh, baby, Devon is a place on Earth. Love yeah. comes or first. Ooh, Devon is a place on Earth. And I, you're not thinking of the uh, Disturbed song then, you Which... know, uh, Devon one of eleven. I can't remember what the song's no. called. It's like, uh... but yeah. So, so basically on the server we have um, the <clears throat> hunger overhaul mod. Yep, and spice which, of life. Which uh, makes hunger really annoying because it yeah. means you have to yeah. constantly eat or you'll die. But constantly eat. Uh, yeah. And okay. also spi- quick, he, he yeah. has spice of life as well. Which means quick quick can, rundown you though, eat, because eat, Joe, uh, Joe hates these The mods. same food over and over again. <laughs> yeah. So basically, hunger overhaul, you want, all, you the, all the basic it. foods are like, like, like say like... Um, What's like a normal food? Like uh, like a, a steak. Now only like gives you like one steak. hunger or two hunger points or what one hunger leg. I don't know about you, but when I go out eat to a, a restaurant steak. and I eat a whole steak, that is that is pretty satisfying. No no no, okay, okay, like, that's fine. No, okay, 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 that's fine. But in this mod, the more the more times you craft to like get more and more complicated meals, the more set the more food it will give you back. So if you made like a steak meal, so it'd give Pam's you like Harvest five. Craft mod as well. Yeah, yeah. Pam's Harvest Craft is like right. a huge amount of food, a huge amount of crafting recipes. But, but also, the, the most annoying one is the spice yeah, of life one. Yeah. So when you eat a food, it becomes less and less <laughs> nutritious the more you eat it, so you have to diversify your diet. So yeah. What happens when you sample everything that when you When you eat 47 no, every, every different, says. different food. Oh, okay. Every, when you eat 47 food, it resets and you can eat the same yeah. stuff again. But you can't yeah. just sit there eating berries. I have to go out and I have to start actually tree hugging. The, the thing is, oh, the, okay. the, the server I made about half a year ago, the reason why I had spice of life is because the hunger overhaul by itself, I was just eating berries like until late game. And so I, this is this is, yeah. this is is super easy. All I so. do is eat berries on modded Minecraft because it's so easy. <laughs> this is why Minecraft is such a difficult sell for old people. What are you doing at the moment? I've heard many things about Minecraft. <laughs> building stuff. No, I'm eating berries. I'm just <laughs> eating a shit ton of berries. I'm making a huge farm yeah, to need variation. Um, berries food. are at my existence not, right not now. Only, not only has he made um, the Nazi mod server of hell okay. with <laughs> super mods, Toby thinks Minecraft's too easy, so he has his own personal tech tree that he follows 
which means he has to build buildings before he can advance technology. So if he wants to go to sleep, he has to build a watchtower, and then he yeah. can go to sleep. And if yeah. he wants to go mining, he has to build like a mine, and he has to build yeah. smelt trees and stuff. So Toby's stuck yeah. in wood age at the moment. <laughs> Uh, official, uh, official, official oh, um, default tools. You know, you know, like Minecraft tools, mm -hmm. like pickaxes and stuff, are disabled. You're not allowed to <laughs> use them. You have to build them with Tinker's construct. We have to build each individual part and put it together. I feel like Minecraft U is some kind of act in either masochism or sadism. I can never remember uh, yeah, which one. Uh, so yeah, masochism, I think it's masochism. Self, yeah, yeah that hurting others. Well, in fairness, I think both of you are uh, <laughs> practicing one of those. One we're, of in is sadist, one is blind, we're in a masochist sadist. We're in a sadist relationship at the moment. Yeah, but that's fun because I'm doing. So Toby's stuck in wood age, yep. and I'm doing railcraft. So you two have both basically been playing Minecraft. Yeah. For this week. Well, I also made some videos on my YouTube channel because I've been meaning to do that for a really long time, and I, I said on one of the podcasts. I'm gonna get the cigarette review done. It's finally done. And I did. I actually got it done. And the next, the next day I went. You know what? I'm on a fucking roll. I'm doing the Spelunky review. Next day, straight afterwards, I'm doing the Rogue Legacy review because that's a pet peeve of mine. If you, how if you it keep... was, it was named after the Rogue game, but it was kind of the first yeah. away from it. it. Was more kind of like a Metroidvania RPG platformer sort of thing. But yeah. Sorry, what did you say, Toby? I, I just feel as though it's like if you if you keep if you keep um, reviewing games at this rate, you're running out of games to review. You're making a no, there's so, I, there, there are so are many lot of games. games. There are a lot of games in the world, Toby. <laughs> hmm. I guess. I mean, you think there are a lot of buttons on the keyboard, Toby? But trust me, there are a lot of games in the world. Well, I've said I'm going to review Heavy Bullets next, so I need to. I'm just going to go off and play that a little bit, and then see what. See what I write. Recently, I have uh, been playing Enter the Gungeon, which is a new roguelite, which is really fun. It's, it's like a uh, the story is really fun because it's like you you have to go into this this uh, bullet dungeon where you you want to find a gun that can kill time. Uh, it's what? really funny. It's kind of this eighties inspired. Um, it does it does sound like a kind of parody plot line similar to the kind of. You like, must oh, find a gun that can kill time. It sounds like the same kind of thing that would. Um, David Hasselhoff would appear in like, yeah. Kung Fury. Kung yeah, Fury. It's, yeah. It is kind of like the, the soundtrack is very like 80s and stuff in it. It's The soundtrack's really good. Mm. The game was really good. It's like a bullet hell game. So what happened is you just got b bullets flying everywhere on the screen and it's a roguelike game so you go in, you shoot people, you get guns and if you die you start again sort of thing. My favourite bit of the game itself is that the environment's very interactable, you can use cover, mm. you can kick tables down and then use them as cover in that direction and move them about and stuff and it's very, the, the world feels alive and the guns are really it's heavy. It sounds pretty real. good. Mm. It is really good. From, from what I've played, it's really fun. But if you want to know any more, you'll have to watch the whole yeah. review. Oh! Yeah, there's a secret feature I haven't told you about that you can only see on my review. So, Daniel, uh, what have you been playing or watching this week? So, this week, and in fact from since I was last on the podcast, I've still mostly just been playing occasional games of Rocket League. Mm -hmm. And the reason I haven't been playing many more games is because I still haven't been invited to the Overwatch beta, not that I'm salty yeah, at all. Yeah, I'm pretty sorry about <laughs> that as well. Or, uh, but also I recently started a 30 day free trial of Crunchyroll, having kicked an anime habit like a long time ago. After yeah. Actually after being on the last podcast, I think where we talked somewhat about some anime or something with yeah. Toby. I thought, I'm going to give this a go again, and I started oh, no. a 30 day <laughs> subscription to Crunchyroll, which is coming up to being finished, and my, my, my queue of watching stuff has just been like, what is the most light and fluffy slice of life stuff mm. I can find, and I have just <laughs> not left the TV screen. I, I, I showed you Space Dandy, that's my favorite yeah, anime, oh God, that and was, you love that. That one. was really it was, good. It's so funny, to anyone who hasn't seen it. Usually, like a watch of the a lot of the anime, there's very serious and very like we're gonna fight you and I'm gonna throw a house at you and stuff. Yeah. But this Space Dandy doesn't take Space itself Dandy seriously at all. It is so funny. I the, the, right. So there is a story about watching Space Dandy that Joe can tell you. I do not get fits of the giggles very frequently. The last time I can honestly remember having a proper fit of the giggles is like four or five years ago. We shouldn't spoil the scene for anyone who hasn't seen no, it. No, but the second not. episode. 
side, there is just something that happens with this guy who runs a ramen shop, and I could not stop laughing. Joke and vouch for this, I was probably yeah. having a fit of the giggles, basically unable to breathe for <laughs> around, I don't know, I'd say a good five minutes. Yeah. And it got worse when uh, my sister, or our sister, I should say, came into the room and I had to show it to her because there's this there's this chain reaction that happens in our family where if if one of us starts laughing specifically between my sister and Joe they they just bounce they feed off each other they just <laughs> it's like an um it's like a nuclear reaction one thing causes another to just yeah. cascade a nuclear chain reaction it, neutrons it, get hit other releasing more neutrons and it just gets worse and worse yeah yep. entropy and spaceships yeah, delta and coefficients and that stuff <laughs> but, oh my god it was it wasn't even funny, but I found it so funny at the time. So it was yeah, kind of funny. It was it was it was funny, but it should not have caused me to laugh that much. Uh, <laughs> um, and I won't talk too much about it, otherwise I will start laughing again. So yeah, <laughs> I've mostly been watching a uh, a ton of anime, and I have been playing occasional <clears throat> games of Rocket. The funniest bit I found was in season two was depressed Andy. That <laughs> was my favorite bit. Meow, <laughs> meow. I want to die. Uh, I'm just a robot. But uh, we, we, we won't talk too much about anime for any of you weeaboo haters out there like yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> Sorry? You, weeaboo haters? Yeah, I thought you had like an anime cosplay do. costume, Joe. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Right I'm dressed <laughs> as the six... I'm dressed as the Sage of the Six Paths uh, in full um, uh, full Naruto cosplay right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I thought. I am the. I'm uh, eating. Uh, I'm eating ramen and. Yeah, anime. Get, get into character. Whereas I am dressed as um, magical girl iPad who uses Apple products to fight the forces of evil. You don't have one. You don't have one MacBook. You have two. Yeah. Well, that's that's yeah. One's for work. In all fairness, you can tell which one's mine because it is just emblazoned with ponies. That's another thing we're doing. Ponies is back on now. Well, no, we have to get on to the next topic. <laughs> so, Daniel, tell Quick, us about move the on, game. move on. <laughs> it's approaching a very dangerous zone. There. Okay, so moving on to this week's uh, board game topic, um, Tony. If I were to say to you, um, do you like cats? Uh, yeah, sure. Are you a cat? I, I, yeah, I like okay. cats. Not like, not like, like massive fan of them, that... but you know, like them a lot. Okay. Um, what if I told you these cats had a volatile tendency to them? I would expl I would ask you to explain to me what do you mean by that? So, the game that we are talking about this week is called Exploding Kittens. Oh. We've mentioned Exploding Kittens before on this podcast. Because it's kind of yep. like Uno. Um, it is a little bit like Uno. It does have an element of RNG in it, but uh, it's also, My as we have frequently talked about, uh, one of the kick-started um, board games, which is it's really mm -hmm. one of the more popular things that was kick-started uh, okay. board games-wise, okay. and caused stuff like um, uh, Space Team, which we've talked about before, to happen. So, right. um, Exploding Kittens is a game which has one rule um, to win the game, don't get killed by the exploding kitten. That's basically right. it. Um, and there are a few ways you can do this. It, it, everyone gets dealt a number of cards to start with, then the rest of the cards are just shuffled, the amount of people playing, minus one, uh, get um, the, the exploding kittens of that number get put into the deck. So one right. person will be left without yeah. a kitten exploding. Exactly. So they don't get their face blown up. Now there is a few rules. Um, you, you On your turn you can either play cards or you mm -hmm. can take a card. Right. Uh, and when you take a card, unless something else causes you to take more than one card, you end your turn. Um, right. So in a way you kind of don't want to pick up in yeah. case there's a kitten. Pretty much. And that is the only way that uh, you can end your, end your turn unless a card specifically says otherwise. For example, okay. um, there are cards in the deck which will skip your turn. There are cards in the deck which will force the player to your left to take two turns. There right. are cards in the deck that will allow you to um, look at what cards are coming up, but you can only put them back in the same order. Um, okay. There are cards in the deck that allow you to nope something, which I will come Counter back to. Counter spell. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, and counter spells or nopes can be noped, so they stack and they. <laughs> oblivion nope. ring, oblivion <laughs> ring. I never realised yep. nope was a verb, uh, but okay. 
Well, it is, because um, the all of the card art for this, and in fact the idea for the game, is done by... Uh, I can't remember the chap's name actually, but he uh, goes by the handle The Oatmeal, so if you've ever seen any of those webcomics or books that he's made, all of the art's really weird on there. So there, there, there's the starter deck, for example, and then there's, there is, of course, a Not Safe for Work expansion, like the Not Safe for okay. Space expansion for Space Team. And that has stuff in it like the Tiny Boob Wizard, for example. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. So okay. That's, that's, that's Exploding Kittens in a nutshell. It's basically one of those games that is designed to mess over your friends, because although you are trying not to find an Exploding Kitten, every card is, uh, every player is given one card which will save them once, and that's called a Diffuse. What the Diffuse allows you to do, as long as you've got it in your hand, if you draw an Exploding Kitten, you have to show everyone, but then you may use your Diffuse and discard it to put that Exploding Kitten back in the deck wherever you would like. Mm. Now, this it will end your turn, so you could put it straight back on top. Yeah. However, yeah. the next player might shuffle the deck, because that's a card they can do. They might skip their turn. If every immediate player skips their turn and it comes back to you again, you're just going to pick that same Exploding Kitten back up. So there is an element of skill to it about deciding where you're going to put it, but mostly it's just a good laugh. And the games are really short. They don't last very long. It's very easy to yeah, teach someone I, to play. Is it Whenever... When I, Go on, no, so, like, I can see that the Uno comparisons. I was gonna say like, are the um, mm. each session, but like an Uno session long because the Uno doesn't take that long to complete either. It's about the yeah. same, yeah. It's the same kind of style. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same kind of simplicity. No, no hand limits, for example. Yeah. So your hand could be as big as it needs to be, like it does in Uno. Yeah. Um, it's the kind of um, game that's open to house rules, for example. So we played for a while, and this was a stupid idea, and don't do this, we played uh, a house rule for a, a while where you could nope diffuses. So if someone that's, went to... That's impossible to play with. Uh, well, the thing is, it just means people start holding nopes. So someone <laughs> diffuses something, someone <clears throat> says nope, they nope that nope, and then someone else nopes that <laughs> I nope. Think, I, th I think the games are too short with that. So that's why we stopped playing with that one. But one that actually works out quite fun is the standard kind of um, stacking rule from Uno with plus twos and plus fours, for example, where if someone plays a plus four, you can play a plus four on top to make it plus eight for the next person along. So we do the same right. with attacks. So if someone's got to take two goes, the next person then gets another plus two added on top of that, and the next person has to take four goes instead. Uh, do you know, one of the strangest things about this game is actually replacing someone's knowledge about they end their turn by picking up a card, not by putting one down. The amount mm. of times people don't realize it's their turn and they're just waiting to see someone play something when in fact they've picked up a card. Yeah, yeah. Well, most card games you draw and then games. play. Yeah, mm. yeah. like like in Uno you want to place cards down so you've got nothing in your hand and then in Exploding Kittens it's kind of like you're okay with your hand size being big as long as you don't have to pick up. It's good. So one of the things that I, I haven't mentioned yet as well about it is it, the, if you think about it, so far the only thing I've said are these um, action cards that let you do other things. There's also filler in that deck in the form of cards that are just card art, basically. But they have copies of themselves in there. And the way this works is if you get two cards of the same type, um, you play both of those cards um, onto the deck. And as long as nobody nopes you, that allows you to basically tell another player to fan out their cards and you just pick a card from their hand at random which of course could be you stealing their diffuse, which is their only lifetime. At that point, their lifeline's gone. They've, they've got to either get a diffuse from the deck, because you can shuffle extra diffuses in, or steal a diffuse back from another player, because they don't know what they're looking for. They can't look at the other player's hand. They've just got to be lucky and pick it. So there's a lot of RNG in this game. Well, there, I, there, there, I have a few complaints about this game, um, and there, there are only a few. And that my only complaint about it really would be um, it's limited in the number of people you can play with um, if you only have the base edition. If right. you have the expansion, you can play with more, but um, it, it becomes more difficult. And unlike Uno, where there are cards which allow you to change the direction of flow, that doesn't exist yeah. in Exploding mm. Kittens. So okay. you will always be dicking over the player on your left. There is no option to dick over the player on your right unless you play So notes. if you knew that the kitten was coming up next, you couldn't direct it towards another no. direction? No, the, uh, the only method you would have to do that would be um, to know it was coming and then shuffle the deck. And you can't, mm. you can't choose how much or how little you shuffle. We played for a while that you could. You just um, have to shuffle it. Yeah, it, you just have to shuffle the whole deck in and out. So, so that's mm. exploding kittens. It's a good what? game. It's 
really easy to, to pick up. What 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 sort of price tags on like the base edition and then the uh, expansion? So the base edition is sixteen pounds, right. sixteen of your English pounds on Amazon, and that's with Prime. Right. So that's um, not, I I swear board games are getting more and more expensive. It's a it's a difficult one, right? I mean, this one's obviously driven the price up somewhat based mm. on its popularity. Because it's literally just cards. It's just cards, but. At the same time, got if though. you backed it on Kickstarter, you would have probably mm. paid more for that. So it's a balance because, actually, as board games go, because board games are tangible items, right? Mm. Um, that you will have to pay costs to well, stock them in the store. Well, unless you play them in uh, tabletop simulator. Well, that's true, but <laughs> yeah. the, the experience yeah. I can say is probably not the same. Um, you're buying tangible objects that have costs assigned to them, and that's why board games, owning board games and buying board games if you are a board game fan like I am it's it's not a cheap business to get into, mm. a lot of my disposable income goes on to board games I feel like physical assets just are always more expensive, like ever getting into Magic the Gathering mm. the cards for that game are so expensive well, yeah. it's weird, one of the things you find as you actually get into board games is you, you gain this appreciation, when you buy a box you know, when you buy a physical box that has some pieces in it um, that are not great. You know about it straight away. You're like, ugh, I'm playing with these bits of card that represent mm, people yeah. and it's not good. But when you buy something like um, Star Wars or Armada, where every single um, piece that you put down on this board, Star Wars Armada, by the way, is basically like Warhammer, but within the Star Wars universe. So you, mm. you can measure which direction you're going, you get your little heroes that can go there, and it's got a little arrow that says, I can move this far. Um, but the die cast models are really authentic. And you do you paint like, them? I, you could do, I suppose. Most people wouldn't because they're great. Because that's why I didn't so. want to play Warhammer. Was like, just I can't be bothered with fiddly painty things. Mm. Yeah. So, I, mean, I never got into Warhammer either, and I don't think I'll get into Star Wars Armada. But having watched other people play it, mm. the only thing that would be a massive barrier to entry on it is the cost. But the cost Tabletop is just like Star Wars Armada. Look there is that. But the second that someone clicks the flip table button, well, what you can do is you can disable that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I think it's, the only so, it's game still fiddly though. Actually managed the True. the only actual game we managed to play successfully was a game of Pokemon between Ryan and Andy. You played Pokemon yeah. on tabletops. Yeah, yeah. Wow. you can did play we, like a whole. Did we try Monopoly or something? Uno, like Uno time. was okay. Uno works really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, don't try and play Monopoly. There's a great if if you have Tabletop Simulator, I strongly recommend you look up. I think it's called Mega Monopoly, um, right. and it is a Monopoly board, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so imagine the standard Monopoly board. Yeah. Now imagine that Monopoly board with a separate Monopoly board to one side. Now imagine the free parking space, and that's also a smaller Monopoly board. What the hell? Yeah, it's very strange to try and play. A Is game it hard like that. to play? Uh, it, it's Im impossible to play, as far as I'm okay. concerned. But um, if you recommend this something impossible. Yourself, it's an option. Uh, well, you know I what? Mean, you know what? You are say this to masochists. Co so. Coming back to what we've <laughs> talked about before, I think VR would be really good. Yeah, I was thinking that <laughs> because mo movement makes me really sick. But if I just was sat there and I could move things around a tabletop, it would be yeah, really that'd be great. Good. That's what put the things I, together. I plan to do that when the vibe arrives. Yeah. One of the things that they got like is now they have um, the Steam Lab. Yeah. which is the uh, basically like a, a bunch of Valve made demos. Yeah, I, I saw a couple of them. Like they had the Dota Two shop. Yeah, exactly. And those stuff. kinds of things where you can just kind of like lean in and look at a table. They have one that's uh, basically you defending this keep from like a bunch mm. of invaders, and you just fire bow and arrows. But to be able to just look down at this small castle and look around, I, I'm doing this again in real in life. In real as life, if, even though it's a podcast, it. but. It's it's a strange experience, but it, it works really well, and it would work quite well, especially with the Vive, with the two motion yeah. controls, mm. yeah. the tabletop simulator. When when Toby edited it, I'll put an audio description as well. So Dan moves in. <laughs> Dan tilts head from side to side. Dan makes weird yeah, gestures yeah, yeah, yeah. with his hands. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll, going back I'll, to the subject of exploding kittens. Oh right, um, okay. You want to go back to the tangent? game. What do you think of it? Yeah. What do you think? I, I really like the idea. Based I actually really enjoy you know, and this sounds like like a. I, I obviously, mm. is there like surely is there no way like like expansions could solve the issues you have with it though? It's certainly possible. Um, 
the, one of the things that this game is really um, sold on is the fact that it has a very core set of mechanics that are yeah. very easy to explain to. The anyone. core sounds Again, really good, like is... like a more intense, but yeah. more like a like a spin on Uno, but like in a more interesting way. In Uno, it's it's odd because you can in Uno it has some of the same yeah. um, issues in that I'm only ever really going to be able to screw over the players to my immediate left and my immediate right. Mm. Um, in uh, in Exploding Kittens, the problem is still there in that if I want to use those kind of power cards, I can only really do it to the player on my left. But that doesn't stop me from noping people anywhere around the table. Yeah. It doesn't stop me from trying to steal diffuses from anywhere around the table. Mm. Um, so there, it's it's a balance. But the core itself, as an opener game, which we've talked about for for yeah. exposure, it's, it's is a really great. good. It's an easy game to yes, get someone who isn't into board games in. Yeah, game. unlike Galaxy Trucker, which we tried to play the other night, that was <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> when we tried to play it. I was actually like passing out. I was so tired. <laughs> if if you've never seen Galaxy Trucker before, it is basically imagine. Being tasked it's, with building your own spaceship. It feels spaceship. like faster than light, kind of. Yeah, it's like faster than light, except you've got to build your own spaceship and then listen to about six years worth of rules. That's not an open <laughs> six, game. Six years but, worth um, of rules. There's there's a lot of rules about how you can and can't build your spaceship. The right. concept. It's really simple. The, con the concept's simple, but the actual game's really complicated. Yeah, it it's is. like, you need to build a spaceship. You're like, right, that's great. It's like, well, this connects to this, and this can't connect to this. And you're going to need this, and you need this to power this, and you need this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Mm. It's like, oh, okay. Like, the actual building of the spaceship's the hard bit. And yeah. then after that, it's okay. It, Maybe we'll cover Galaxy Trucker on another podcast because I'll give it another go. Yeah. I've actually played it with some people who've actually got the core concept because it's a game I, I really wanted. In fact, I got it for Sounds my like... birthday. Um, I'm, I knew it was going to be a lot of fun, but it's only fun if you. I think you're playing people who have either played it before or have read the rules ahead of time. Yeah. So we'll cover you that. You were trying time. to explain it while playing. Yeah, it. that is the that is a problem. But yeah. going back to your point, yeah, you could easily fix the problems with exploding mm. kittens mm. with expansions. I mean, they didn't necessarily, you know, in inverted commas, fix anything with the not safe for work expansion because that was just part of the Kickstarter deal. Was okay. I'm going to make an yeah, not okay. safe for work condition yeah. as well to just bulk out the amount of people you can play with and the core set of card art um, but I see no reason why in the future they wouldn't create a different um, card that did something else like there could very easily be a card that just, just reverses the flow but doesn't um, end your turn because that would upset the core if it did just end your turn yeah, yeah, yeah. people would start holding those like the new skips for example I think the thing we saw the most was people always wanted to know being able to see what was in the deck. Yeah, the 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 what does the future hold card as we've called it because um, any time I play it, I just make the noise that one. Of the, I think it's the, the uh, yeah yeah it says whenever what does the yeah future exactly hold. it's on Hearthstone. I do. I started saying this when I was playing with um, Gemmel and all of his friends who have not played Hearthstone. So anytime well, I turn this over, go what does the future hold? They well, just be like, I, I'm a big Blizzard fan, this? and Thrall's like he is the main character yeah. of Warcraft Three. <laughs> so anyone who's yeah. played Warcraft Three will know Thrall the Shaman because it's like um, the uh, Orc campaign is the trial campaign, so yeah. everybody plays that. So he's like he's like one of the big Hearthstone. He's the big you know um, he's the big Warcraft heroes that everyone knows about. Yeah. I, I saw it recently for April Fools. Actually, they said they were going to make a Hearthstone uh, MMO. MMO, which is quite <laughs> yeah. funny because they were like, "All these, all these characters you know from Hearthstone are now going to be in this big world <laughs> expansion." He's like, "You know, people that want to go." It's like, "Wow, I never knew I wanted all these Hearthstone characters." In. Yeah, wow, I never knew I wanted all this. Wow, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no! It's World of Hearthstone, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, not oh, of around. course not. No. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so we should we should uh, move on to the next topic. Which Wait, is... hold on. Most important question: Do you think that you would like to play slash pick up? Oh Spider no! Kittens? This sounds actually amazing. This sounds like like it seems like it's not too pricey. I don't think, and I definitely want. Like, it's easy to pick up, and the artwork sounds mm. funny. I guess. Obviously, not being able to yeah. actually see it. The the um. The, the first time you get the deck and just sort of start leafing through the cards is great. Yeah. If you were a Kickstarter backer, um, the box is even better because when you open the box, yeah. it meows. Yeah. That's one of those, that is worth having had to pay the extra amount 
I'm quite sure. I, my friend got the Kickstarter edition, and we basically have an unwritten rule, which is when an exploding kitten is turned over, you must open the box to make the noise. That sounds very so. cool. I like that. But yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely on. buy this. This oh. sounds really good, so we can move on. Toby loves exploding kittens. The uh, <laughs> but um, basically, the next topic is I wanted to talk about an article I read on Kotaku. Because it was linked on the R Game subreddit from Kotaku, because of course nobody re actually reads Kotaku. But uh, Valve was recently found guilty of breaching Australia consumer law. And I see this all the time that Valve's yeah. getting sued for breaching consumer law because they're st no, you don't actually own your games on Steam. Mm. The question I want to pose is do you actually own your games on Steam or does Valve own them? Because at any point they have the right to terminate your Steam account and all your games have gone. Because recently in Australia, Valve was found guilty of this after an 18 month case and they were forced to pay legal fees and change their refund policies given that this was 18 months ago that Valve hadn't already you know, added their refund policy. But now they actually have to employ people who sit down um, with Valve and can actually offer people refunds via letters, mm. uh, emails, uh, they can have somewhere to write in and do that sort of stuff. Even e like. Not necessarily. Even if you buy a game on Steam on your computer, um, you have to give people a way to send a send a letter in to say I want to refund my game. Yeah. It's because it's software, I would imagine. The the main defense Valve had is they claim they weren't in Australia, so they <laughs> yeah they were only that's always their claim to though. access their store <laughs> through through their servers. Mm. But they weren't actually based in Australia, so they didn't have to adhere yeah. to any laws. They said that. The they said that to the EU laws. as well. When the EU was like, "Yeah, you need to have a refund yeah, system." Yeah, they've always dodged around these consumer, always dodged around these consumer laws. They don't uphold to European standards yeah. or mm. uh, Australian standards. And I just wanted to talk about this. So I think it's an interesting topic because it's it it comes under almost the same purview that that software usage does. So if you look at something like mm. Adobe Creative Cloud, right? Yeah. It used to be that you could buy the master collection for Adobe products, which would cost you an arm and a leg, but you'd own the software and be able to Photoshop use it. Photoshop and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah, Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, everything yeah. that was in the collection. Do people still buy. use Flash to animate things? Or? They do, um, but for the most part, obviously, Flash is dying as a um, yeah, web based HTML5 is coming moving out. forward. But Flash is still heavily. In fact, for example, going back to I know this was the moot topic before, but My yeah. Little Pony is actually made in Flash, for example. Okay. So, um, but then they moved to what was the Creative Cloud. And the Creative Cloud meant you didn't have copies of your software to use physically. You had a license to use that copy and you paid it every so mm -hmm. often. So mm -hmm. you would pay $15 a month in order to continue using Photoshop rather than pay um, $1,200 oh, $1, up front in order to just buy Photoshop and everything else comes with it and just use it forever. And then you owned all the... Exactly. Um, but it's an interesting topic to cover because software often falls into this um, sort of license renewal SNS yeah. stuff. So it's sales and subscription. Yeah. Um, and well, you're not really subscribing to Steam because you're not paying. Thing, you're not paying for it. But the One thing is, I reckon if you asked a lot of people, what well, I'll ask you guys, if Steam, as it is today, suddenly came out tomorrow and said. Steam's been free for a very long time, but we think what we do at the moment is provide you with the service to get access to your games. Oh, I can tell you now there would be so much riot. There probably would, but I think a lot of people would bite the bullet and pay no, if no, it was no, something no, no. like a If they can month. ask for paid mods, and there can be such an uproar that they would lose money from, yeah. having, from having all the emails come in of people not wanting to pay for mods. If they made Steam, uh, a subscription access that people have already paid money for their games yeah, and they can't have true. access to them after they it would have to, it would have to be a separate people thing. would cr yeah. they would absolutely I would um, go mental I'd be making videos so what, what, consider what? like okay maybe it's a bad subject but imagine that instead they um, they say it's a pound a month or something like that. it's not very much money okay so it's a tenner a year right and it's the Xbox Live model almost where if you right. want to play okay. online Origin Origin access model? Maybe? Kind of, yeah. If you want to play online, then um, oh, so you with but, but you but you have de game, but you have better servers and dedicated and, and things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So you'd be able to play on Steam servers and dedicated servers and everything else right. like that if you paid that much, and of course you still get all of the other benefits. I, I mean, already I already think Valve are on very legal. They're on they're on very shaky legal ground already. Yeah. I, I mean, this is not the sort of thing I'm expecting Valve to do. The difference, I think. 
I think why there's such a dichotomy in our opinions is because because I'm older than you, I remember a time when I had a fair few PC games, and I used to have um, the codes you had to type in to start CD the game, keys. the CD keys, like written down in massive Excel yeah. Yeah. Or, or written down everywhere. Um, and then Steam came along and you didn't need to give a shit about They still that give you CD keys, but you don't ever need them. That's the thing, they look after them for you, and that's almost the service Valve's paying for, um, or is, is looking after for you. But because they don't pay, it's almost like there isn't a contract. What, what, to yeah, I was, was going to say though. Like, this is going back to my original point. But in, if this was software like yeah. um, a copy of Photoshop and you were paying mm. monthly for it, if you're doing that, you're agreeing to the terms of the service, which are that you won't do certain things in order to um, make sure that you're not going to mess up the program, you're not going to alter it in any way. Yeah, yeah. But because Steam's free, gonna, it almost uh, is a slight difference to that. What I was going to say though, like the way before when the EU was saying like, oh, you need to add the refund systems, the Steam's statement was like, we're not actually selling games, we're selling them like a license forever to use the game. Hmm. Obviously, but they instantly went, no, that's what? that's that doesn't that's not really a thing. You are selling them the game. You're selling them like a license key, like every other piece of software. But at any time, if anyone breaks yeah. the Steam subscriber agreement, they can terminate your account. So that's that's the thing is right. If if you've ever read the the Steam subscriber agreement, um, I've read bits and pieces of it. It's it's a fairly long document, but it's actually pretty yeah. well written. There's some pretty <clears throat> tedious things that they can terminate your account for. That is true, but for the most part, it is stuff that you're thinking. Well, if there are going to be people that would do this, I would be happier for Steam to terminate their account. For example, people hacking and people trying to get yeah. older free games and stuff like that. Mm. If the tedious stuff... That's a good question. If the, you, the stuff that you thought is tedious in the Steam subscriber agreement wasn't in there, would you be happier with them saying you're only having a license to play the game? Not I would like them being the up game. front. Yeah, front this is super clear. Games on Steam. Yeah. So you, you basically would want them to go down the good old games model where it's like, yeah. there's no DRM, here is your CD key, you download that because and keep it forever. Because when... It, all this law, when it was written, nobody had buy, bought games online. We had yeah. physical copies of your games, and you were able to resell your games. Yeah. You can't resell your games on Steam. And the thing that makes means that you don't own it is that you can lose access to it any time, you cannot sell it, and you cannot lend it to anyone mm. else. I can't remember what, what law specifically it is that stops this. I can't remember if it's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. I think that's the DMCA mm. takedown ones. But there's one which is very similar to it, and because that hasn't changed in so long, but the way that we buy and play games these days has changed a lot, that's where a lot of this contention and, and problems with Steam comes up. Personally, I'm on the side of the fact that although I um, know that um, I don't really own my games, mm. Steam in a way does, I yeah, am I think happy that. for that to happen because, yeah. because I, I trust I'm I sure. mostly trust Steam. Okay, well, I, I have had better service from other companies, customer service wise, but um, for the, the, most custo part, things the Steam work. customer service doesn't. Yeah, exist. it's it's pretty rubbish. It's, no, it's would... rubbish at best. They have they've said they're making plans and they've made efforts to make it better, mm. but as as it is, to not worry about going out to a shop, have a physical CD that I have to look after. To be able to have the peace of mind that mm. if my machine ever dies, I can just click one button and all my stuff gets Yeah, that, that's fine. I'm happy that my games are backed up to the cloud, yeah, but I, I don't would like, own my game. That's all fine, that's but I would, I would want one mechanism to make it so much safer. There needs to be like some sort of legal mechanism. So say you've been suspected for right. hacking. So, so, then, so Steam takes your account down, you lose all your games, you've put like thousands of pounds into it. There should be some sort of legal mechanism so you can get that money back. Yeah. Some sort of like because uh, you don't have CD mm. keys anymore, you can't prove that you're. What's I mean? That's what I mean. There needs to be a legal mechanism so you can prove it. So they have to keep the account there to show that it was yours. So that's what I'm saying. There needs to be like I want a legal first, mechanism for that. The, 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 the last safety net in case something they do goes wrong. Mm. Say, that makes sense. That makes that does make a good deal of sense. If I was to say an example, I buy a. Um, I buy a piece of music, I buy an album, yep. I get the MP3 files, I own the MP3 files, yep. I back it up to Google Drive, it's on the cloud. Now Google Drive doesn't own 
my album, I own the album, I have the actual hard copy and they have a copy of it. I'd like Steam to have a copy of my games. Yeah. I'd like them to really have good. it safe for the cloud. But I'd also like a hard I'd also like a DRM free version. Mm. Like what GOG is doing is really good. I recently got the Witch on there and I can have it on my GOG Galaxy client. I can save that on the cloud, that can go with me anywhere. But I also on their website I can request a DRM free copy that I can use and I own that. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty good. And they can't take that away from me. I think probably a lot of people like me have grown with Steam as it has grown, and they remember it's, when it was rubbish. It's been out and uh, what ten years it, almost. Well, it's been around for a very long time. Um, it's but they remember when the times weren't so good, and I think because, because of that, um, it's a lot easier for sort of the older people to say. I don't mind so much because I don't play as many games these days. Mm. But for people who were younger, and I know obviously there will be people out there who are older and still incredibly yeah, yeah. diehard about games, they will they will say that games are their life and they never want to not have access to those yeah. games again. I mean, for me personally, for example, there is a core subset of games that are in my library that um, I know I will play, and there are probably about seventy to like sixty five seventy percent of the games in my Steam library probably will never get installed again, that I will probably never play again. Um, and that's why I am less worried about this stuff. But have you but not put money into the other games? Th it's though? good to see what... That is true. I have, and I've got my enjoyment factor out of it. Yeah, no, but in case, case you want the, to use the, it again, you still want to own it in some way. Like, I just this thought... is the thing, right? Here's 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 my issue with um, that, that argument, is I'm a bit fickle. In that yeah. I once I have played a lot of single player games, I'm not the type of person. I will if I play a single player game through twice, mm. it'll be because I wanted to play it for the story, then yeah. I wanted to do it to full completion, yeah. or a different scenario, for example, like Deus Ex or Mass Effect. I wanted to go down different story routes and make yeah. different decisions. Those kinds of games will give me lots of replayability. A game like Lego Island, for example, that's an amazing right? game. Yeah, the the best game ever created, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> has very little replayability factor these days what? It's, it's difficult for me to go back to it now I and really i don't think i would load it again it. and there's actually a list on gog where you can get them to add support for old games and lego islands <laughs> up there i'm not surprised it's so if anyone game, wants but... lego island again which i i, I have does, never experienced lego, lego island, island. But i do not know what you're about how old it is now oh and... so good pepperoni on a pony yeah i know there's there, there are some games which obviously for short of this like I'm quite happy to play Doom 2 quite a lot I have, it's, I, it's old but it's great I have played through Half-Life 2 so many times but that Half-Life 2 still looks pretty good by today's standards and it's very playable by just click go pretty much right stuff where you have to start saying I want to load up DOS and now I need to actually get some <laughs> run I was only like <laughs> I know but it's difficult and because of that sort of hill there are a lot of games on my Steam list I know I won't play again I will just go mm. I'm fine with this because I paid money I got my enjoyment out of it games are not something where you're going to pay something and you know you're going to use it over and over and over again for example a door handle mm. right? you're going to pay for a door handle and it's going to be okay and you, it'll look okay but you're going to get a crap ton of use of that over a very long period of time yeah. whereas a game will be something where you sit down, you play it for probably six hours, and maybe you never play it again. I feel like well, I feel this is this, this is how you're playing games, not necessarily how everyone else plays games, though. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. This is this is a, this is a yeah. very differing opinion. Like, I'm now I'm getting older. I I have more work time than I do. Well, that's not true, but I have. Uh, I have less hours in the day to play games, so my opinion is different to what mm. you guys are. I agree that Geo, what GOG is doing is probably the best way forward, um, but at its heart, I think the core problem is actually currently driven not really by Steam. It's it's because Steam is able to do this because the law isn't. Up to yeah, the if law is the always law always behind. Up to date and in line. Exactly. To the stay. law is so hard to change, though. It is difficult, and it's not easy, especially because it's not just one place where it happens. It basically for Steam for for what they've been. They doing, exist in, in multiple uh, continents. Exactly. So they have to get it in America for them to start applying to those kind of rules, and then they come over to different places like the UK, like Australia, etc. Yeah. yeah. And they got one thing about things. Australia: they still pay ridiculous amounts of money for games, mm. and they don't even own those games. Yeah. I think that is absolutely atrocious. Mm. 
I could take, can I take you on a quick history of Steam? So we've had Steam for what ten years. We used to share a Steam account from our copy of Half Life Two. Yeah, I think <laughs> Half Life Two. Whenever that came out, I think it was two thousand seven. Because it also had a copy of Counter Strike Source. Oh right? my god! Yeah, and we both used to fight over who could play Counter Strike Source because we had we shared the same Steam account. But for the longest time, Steam didn't even have an offline mode. No. It had one, but it was broken and didn't actually well, it work. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, like it was broken. It basically, they didn't put any thought into it. It's like, you want to basically take Steam You had to be offline, online to use like, it, which meant Steam uh, had this massive DRM on it because their offline mode was broken. Yeah. So you couldn't actually play in your games Can I just say how, to Steam. how crazy it is now that on Steam, we're now able to share games if we want to in the same yeah. house. That, when like, we family first started accounts. on Steam... Mm. It would literally be a case of you sign in, it kicks the other guy out, and you go, I was about to kill this douchebag, yeah. and now I'm just like, Jah. I think it's kind of silly that we're now in 2016, and it's taken Steam this long to actually add a refund policy after, mm. and they've yeah. been sued by Australian, the Australian consumer. I was doing that a quick point yeah. is that I, I will never agree with Steam or Valve going, oh, we, we, we operate in America so we don't have to abide by your laws. It's like, no, you're technically taking money yeah. out of their yeah, country. That's, that's you abide by their laws to do that. Any, any, anywhere you accept money, yeah. you have to adhere to those yes. laws. Yeah, that's, that I don't agree with on Steam or Valve's policies at all. If you, if you decide, you know what, we don't want to abide by these laws, you need to withdraw from the country. Yeah. Now that I think would actually be what causes more problems for gamers. Hmm. A lot of places is that if if Valve and I it's like a lose lose situation though at that point. They wouldn't because it's a yeah it's a yeah. big chunk of revenue they wouldn't be getting. They're basically saying, guys, we can't do this anymore. You guys are complaining a lot about the fact we're not abiding to these laws, but we can't. You know that they they I guess would argue we don't have the revenue to make this happen right now. Yeah. We're going to have to withdraw from those well, areas. I, I think I luckily at the moment though they're still making huge amounts of revenue, so it's worthwhile them to pursue it. Luckily, yeah, okay, that is true. <laughs> the Australians have to pay extortionate fees. They they've had to sue Valve because they're not adhering to their laws, and they they live in a country of the most deadliest creatures in the that world. That is true. <laughs> yeah, and the their 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 government is actively banning most games. From actually being able to play, yeah. I just feel very well. sorry. Uh, super eighteen have, games. Any game is in Australia. I'm very sorry for you. It's funny. The, the reason why um, Australian video games actually cost a lot is actually because the living wage in Australia is really quite high. So if mm. you go and you look at someone's wage for being a waitress, for example, in America, they'll get paid, for example, seven dollars an hour, and they will make most of their money on tips. That's how the culture yeah, works. Yeah, which is really stupid. If you go over to Australia and take the same job, they actually earn. $14 instead and that's where a lot of the different kind of um, costs for things go up because people get paid more in general the costs for things go up because the currency is slightly devalued but I still think that Australia has had a very raw end of the stick because it's not like the people who play these things i.e. video games are mm -hmm. earning that money because they're mostly kids so yeah but I guess to, to round this this topic out um if we were in an ideal world, I guess the question is, would you rather see Valve probably doing less in the terms of, probably in the terms of like sales, etc. Yeah. So they, they, they would offer games maybe at slightly more cost or they wouldn't do as many sales because they would be using that money to make sure they are adhering to the we rules have and implementing things such as good old games, etc. We have enough sales... Steam sales. Everyone has enough games. I have like three hundred yeah. games on Steam. Hmm. Um, I would. I. I generally myself personally would rather them put money into adhering to laws, and I would like to be able to use my use and play my games any way I wanted to. I, I think would like to be able to. And in, in an ideal world as well. In an ideal world as well, like the 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 law would be up to date, and there'd be an extra mechanism to make get your account yeah. back or get at least the money back if something goes wrong and you get. Mm. Like, like they they ban you for no good reason. I mean, to be to be completely fair, to be completely fair, that is well, not, I'm not. I don't think any of us are saying that's Valve's. No, 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 absolutely not. It's difficult to to put that on any one entity's no, no, shoulders. No. I mean, Valve are probably one of the companies that could have a go at it, but that's going to be bloody hard to do. Yeah, no, it, it's but, it's um, it's the country's yeah, so, job in a way. But I or, think we're mostly them. exactly. I think we're mostly in agreement then that we would prefer to see. Steam go down the route 
of the, the good old yeah, games kind I would, of um, I would like that method personally. of doing things. But I understand. I also but understand I, why they wouldn't. If, if it, hmm. if anything, I would just like Valve to be more transparent yeah. with what they're doing. Hmm. It's a very difficult subject to approach because, um, let's face it, a lot of the people who are buying these games um, are kids. Mm. And by Valve not being completely transparent, they look kind of cool. Like, you know, you see a lot of other companies saying, make sure you ask your mum and dad first, etc. All this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Valve are essentially selling to children and they need to be clear what it is that they're doing. They need to be clear that to a 14 year old who, um, or 12 year old. They won't read terms and conditions. Like, even though they probably shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to do that. They, they're going to think, oh, I'm, I'm losing this game. I'm going to go download a hack. They need to be very clear up front to them. If you do this, you'll get banned and we won't give you any money back. Yeah. You know, that kind yeah. of stuff. So. That's what the Valve anti cheating systems for. Yeah. You can get banned from one game on Steam and you can still play another one. Yeah. They, they don't do an account wide ban unless like, you have like major offences where you compromise the security of Steam itself. Hmm. Because I know a friend of mine just thought it'd be a good idea to hack on Modern Warfare Two and got that banned from Modern Warfare Two. <laughs> the amount of people that cheat in Modern Warfare Two, though, I swear one of the main things like for Prop Hunt was seen as a, a, a hack for ages on Modern yeah. Warfare Two. It's because I went on there and then he just made my screen like marijuana and just said smoke weed. Were <laughs> <laughs> well, there air horns playing at the time yeah. by any chance? It was like it was very MLG. But <laughs> you felt more MLG. Yeah. I think that. I think that topic's finished. Yep. Valve, you need to sort yourself out with Steam. Come Step on. up your game, son. We've upheld you, but the year of CG, CD Projekt Red is rising. GOG is <laughs> becoming bigger and bigger, and to be honest, they're kind of replacing you as the best store out there. Mm. So get on that, Gabe. We don't. We we're okay with fancy headsets, but we're trying to do some more stuff. I do you. like fancy headsets, though. Don't stop making the fancy headsets. Right. But don't put as much emphasis on What I want to talk about is, recently, <laughs> there's been a new Ratchet & Clank game coming out, which is a reimagining of the first game, and a movie mm. to go along with it. Yeah. It looks really good, actually. Have it you does. seen the trailer and the, and the and the game? Yeah, I've seen um, gameplay of, like, the it's not set on a train, right, as it's moving, I think. The gameplay I'd seen, at least, is on mm. the There, back, there is a train set like, yeah. coming the, as it's moving for us. Yeah, and I, I remember seeing the trailer for the for the movies a while back, actually. A friend of mine, um, you remember Danny, he's he's always been obsessed with Ratchet Clank. Anything made by Sony, basically, yeah. and where Sony's been involved, even slightly. I feel like um, me and Joe can't like that, though, as well, though. Mm. Oh, well, our, our house has very much been a Ratchet and Clank household. When the PS2 was around in our house, the games that we basically would ask for the most when they came out would be the Ratchet Clank yeah, because they yeah. had a really good tongue in cheek well, kind of for me, humor to in, them. Insomniac. But for, for me, the way I, I actually like got that, into okay. gaming through Ratchet and Clank, so it's to me it's like one of like the, the first games I actually yep. owned. I remember many times you met, like you would be trying to do something and you wouldn't be able to do it, so you'd have to come and get me <laughs> help. Like, mm. as in, that's not like saying that Joe's not good at No, it's when, you, it's just when you're younger. He would have been younger yeah. at the time. It's just, yeah, exactly. It's like one of those times where I, there, I, there aren't many other games. I look back at games I've played. To keep going in this <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I look back at games I've played, like levels that I this found hard. Of... I look at it and go, why did I find this hard? I feel like I just feel like a complete retard whenever I look back on those things. But Try, then, right, so get this. Try doing a computer science degree with games development. Then figuring out all of the maths involved to do this stuff and looking at the kind of like programming languages and the yeah. uh, hardware that was available to them at the time. And then suddenly everything makes sense when you, you start looking at Crash Pandicoot and you go, he's okay. basically a square. Of course, I on my screen, it doesn't look like I hit him, but I am also a square. Yeah, I yeah, definitely yeah. hit him yeah, because hit it was just hitboxes guy. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway... Uh, with, with this, we don't really see any more of these action platformer games because mm. I, there was a lot of them out there. You know, you got the Ratchet and Clanks. There was even Ratchet Clank's not necessarily an action platformer so so much. It's it's a difficult um, genre yeah, it's a very difficult. It's almost genre. third person, but it has a lot of it has a lot of okay. Of it's, 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 it's a three D action. It's a third person. Uh, it's, it's kind of a brawler. <laughs> 
a gun brawler. It's not a brawler. A gun it's brawler. Close. It's yeah. It's it is. That's a good. That's a good. Um, it's it's a platforming gun brawler. I, I, I almost. You know, maybe it's got these crazy weapons. No, can I suggest? Linear, can I suggest I a genre know. name quickly? Ratchet and Clank clone. It. You better not have brawler in it. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank clone. <laughs> Like our favourite Doom Yeah, clone I like my Doom FPS. clones. Yeah. I play Doom clones all the time. I'm going to see... I'm going to see what Ratchet and Clank's actually defined as on the interwebs to see what sort of genre they I see. I think it's an action See, platformer. they call it a platform game in yeah, fairness. Yeah, it is a platformer. A lot... You may not have realised this, but when you were going around fighting enemies, you were platforming all the time. The dynamo stuff, yeah. the jumping yeah, on time. Nice. The whole level was a design around platforming. If you really think back to it, a lot of the time it's just like floating platforms yeah. that you have to jump around to get to another bit of the island. No, but it was really good. But it's, there's nothing it's on, it's, it's, it's nothing it's on the PC like it It's a gun either. strafe game. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing on the PC like it, though. Like, I, 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 I can't really see anything out there. Because you had... You had a lot of games like this from yeah. that time, where you had like your Jack mm -hmm. and Daxters as well. Mm -hmm. you, even Nintendo Six Four, you had Super Mario World. You had um, no, not Super, Super Mario Sixty Four. Yeah, uh, Banjo Kazooie was a big one. What about um, Beyond Good and Evil? No, that, I, that didn't have that as much gunplay. It had Beyond Good and Evil was a great game. We're still yeah. waiting for a sequel to that. Yeah, but. Um, those kinds of games where we see these kind of action platformers, they kind of just died down. Another, another example would be Spyro as well. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So these sort of games that everybody That's loved at the time and everyone played. Well, they were originally kind of, they made by AAA's. Really exist anymore. They were originally made by AAA's. It's like, like horror games. Like, originally made by AAA's, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. no longer really made by AAA's. Now made by indie games or indie devs. And it's just it's like a weird transition yeah. from PS2 to like PS3 and PS4. The money's not in it, I guess. Well, I think it is. It's just they don't think it is. I don't know about you. I know. I know. Me and you, we used to play on our PlayStation Twos and stuff, and we've kind of moved towards PC. Mm. But you still get these Ratchet and Clank that the games. They've made them for the newer systems, the PS3, the PS4. Yeah. They're kind of console exclusives these days. You don't really see an action a action platformer on the um, on the PC at all. Well, they're not mm. from a AAA company. And. Uh, mm. I can't remember anything that I can't remember playing anything on PC ever that would I would equate to being like no that. neither would I yeah but I actually really like that genre because you have, it is really fun yeah the the genre of that game was basically action platform go around and collect this number of things yeah. and then you but get but keep a shooting everything like the main mecha just, game mechanic like, the gameplay itself was really fun my favourite yeah and the, the the most fun thing was everything yeah. was destructible and could be bolts turned into was bolts, in everything. It was great. Was it was kind of like the Lego. I think I think Lego games are kind of the closest thing we have. Yeah. That's not a bad analogy. Yeah, Lego games are very similar. That's a good point. I'm looking at a list of games that people have described as being a bit like Ratchet and Clank, Transformers War for Cybertron. That's not far off. No, sort it's of. Like it's, it's an okay game, but it's more shooter, I yeah. guess, than it is platformer. It's I can see, I can see the it. comparison, but I wouldn't say it's quite that. Said, obviously. We we had a uh, a demo for Sly Cooper, but I don't. I've always wanted to play that because these days, if you want to play these action platforms games, they're just like the. HD remake collection on yeah. PS4, PS3. Yeah. Like if I want to play Jack and Daxter these days, I'll have to uh, get the remake. I think you can only get on P. I think there might be a PS3 version, but you have to get a PS4. Probably. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of getting pigeonholed into buying a PS4 if I even want to play this new Ratchet yeah. game, which I do. What about the Sonic games. Hmm? What about the Sonic games like Sonic Heroes? Would you class what, that as the same? The 3D. Thing? Mm. They There's were weird no... because he didn't necessarily have guns, right? Yeah, but like 3D. Just they're like, a lot of but like 3D speed runs, on... though. The, the thing about the, Son the Sonic games, they were more they were big... rail. That's true. Yeah, they weren't like open world exploration. Yeah, they just like speed. Necessarily even have any story. I would just, I would just call them like speed, so the speed only... run games, really, like the Sonic games. I think the thing that replaced action platformers was just large open world games. I yeah. think so. People so... wanted like almost 
stuff that was just I can go anywhere and do what I want and it, don't when, have to do when it you saw the dawn of like GTA Assassin's Creed everyone just wanted these really like simple brawlers that you could just explore and had a fun combat yeah. system like yeah, but even, Arkham City even when the first uh, Assassin's Creed came Shadow out, of though, Mordor that sort of stuff when Assassin's, the first Assassin's Creed came out I was still yeah. playing Ratchet and Clank so the only two things on this Hmm. The only two things on this list that we um, that I can actually say I've played that I kind of agree is again Beyond Good and Evil's on here, but also Kingdom Hearts. That's Kingdom fair. Hearts, yeah. That's actually yeah, a fair yeah. um, one to make. But I think again that was a PS2 exclusive. I don't think that ever came out on anything mm. other than the PlayStation. So, but I want to play Kingdom Hearts. I want to play Sly Keeper. I want to play Jack and Dexter. I have to go on Amazon and I have to get the. PS3 remakes. Yeah. They, these these games don't have sequels for modern systems. The no, only that, you one that's up a PS3 or a PS4 for those kinds of things. Yeah, luckily we own a PS3, but yeah. they've stopped supporting Ratchet and Clank games on PS3. The last one I got was the Nexus, yeah. which is just on the cutoff point before they've made this one for the PS4. Mm. And Ratchet and Clank's kind of the only game now that is actively supporting the action pu- the puzzle platformer kind of Here, genre. Here's a and there's definitely demand for it. Here's an interesting question well, though. It's like so, like the, the developers for uh, Jack and Daxter, definitely um, an action platformer yeah. in some way. Where where would you class Uncharted though? Like that's kind of a weird one for me. Like, what is that? Uncharted's an adventure yeah. game, I think. It's got it's 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 got, it's got shooters, parkour it's a platforming shooter though. in a lot of ways. It's got puzzles in it. Yeah. But there weren't necessarily any it's puzzles almost, particularly. It's almost in, just like, um, like Insomniac carried on making Ratchet and Clank games and then Naughty Dog changed the genre to their own new, like, weird genre of just Uncharted. They kind of moved yeah. with the times, though. They were mm. like, people want to see realistic shooters. Here's what I think the problem might be, right? I'm trying to think now of a setting and a bunch of ways in which you could make a Ratchet and Clank-esque game and not come off as being called a Ratchet and Clank. Game. No, I think or you, I, I, a game... Because a lot of people will just All right. come to okay. the same conclusion that, say, they'll play, I want to play Ratchet and Clank game. You're like, okay, there's a Ratchet and Clank game. It says, oh, I wish there was something else like this. And they go play it and they go, I feel like I'm playing a reskin. All right, okay. What, what if, you do, if we take elements from it, though? Why don't we have, like, an open world game but had, like, crazy weapons you could buy? And that was, like, the main mechanic, just buying new and crazy weapons. It's because. But that's Borderlands, basically. That's basically Borderlands. Yeah, no, but I, that's not really the same thing. I'm thinking like, more like an Just Cause 2 FPS, world. RPG, and then you can just like, buy yes. more and more ridiculous guns. Yeah. The thing that um, really I think a lot of people remember Ratchet and Clank for is actually it had really it had believable, well not believable story, but <laughs> it had a universe you could believe yeah. in. You could yeah. genuinely believe there were these out of work superheroes, mm-hmm. there were small robots, there were these other planets, there were ships that talked to you. That's the kind of stuff that really stuck with me from Ratchet and Clank. I don't think um, necessarily the genre what was was what grabbed me, what kept me no, coming no. back to Ratchet and Clank was the fact that as soon as I picked up a controller, I knew what I was doing in Ratchet and Clank again because it was the same. No, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. But what got me playing again was like trying to find the Insomniac Museum, but, that kind of stuff, because yeah. there was a lot of stuff I wanted to know more about. It was fun, the museums, though. They weren't just informative. Yeah. There was actually things to do and play and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think one of the main factors was the limitations of the system. So when the PS2 and the Nintendo 64 came out, one of the limitations was it was really hard to render realistic graphics. If you ever saw like a human being like Snake, his face <laughs> was like a block. Yeah. His face was like a square. So it was a lot easier just to make these little cartoony characters. <laughs> and as the technology got better and better, people are like, we want realistic shooters. We don't want these cartoony characters. We don't want these happy, you know, easy to render worlds. Mm. We kind of more want these realistic gritty shooters. And the action puzzle platformer kind of just got shoved aside yeah I think so I like the colourful kind of yeah I really like it yeah, I think I, I would well. like to play yeah. another Ratchet and Clank game I just and, and in fact in fairness it would be quite decent now that Steam and the like is being able to sort of mm. say I want to push more content onto your sofa and I know a lot of the times people are saying you know I don't want to play as many games that are connected to my sofa with my Steam controller I want to play hardcore shooter games whatever um, I see why Steam's doing it, and if they were to manage to do something that was a Ratchet and Clank style thing, I think I would be quite happy with it. But it would have to be um, 
the IP itself would have yeah, to be yeah. different enough to make but the fact, but the fact that genre because isn't really being developed for though. Writing a hard act to follow. Yeah, but the fact that the, the, mm. the genre well, isn't being developed, you can't see it, these two IPs. So that's why I think more than this film. Yeah. The, the thing that makes it a lot, the thing that makes it a, a lot easier these days that they could actually do it is because most publishers say there's no demand for it. Yeah. We've got Kickstarter. We can be that's like, true. we're going to fund it ourselves because it's the game we want. Because recently, there was a game, Yoko Yelui, which was the, the, a couple of developers from Rareware. They cut off and made their own company, and they've made the spiritual success of the Banjo Kazooie. And two million was pledged of his 175k gold. They they got funded like instantly. I know yeah. Jim, even Jim Sterling like instantly backed this, and he was like, "We really want these action puzzle platformers again." And you know, the the demand is for it. You will get the money. I just really don't see why. You know they're against it. I don't want to buy a PS4. Triple A's, I, triple A's are weird like that. My theory though. is perhaps. I think my my theory is perhaps that when we were younger, at Ratchet and Clank, we had we played. It looked cool as it came out. Hmm. I think I don't know if you've noticed this, but especially as I was growing up, the more younger people I talked to, it was almost like I would talk to a bunch of sixteen-year-olds, and they would have played COD at least when I was a bit younger, and I was like, okay, fair enough. And now that demographic has almost slipped down to like the eleven and twelve year olds, and now yeah. they're playing card in Minecraft, and they, they don't want super want realism. To play stuff like Ratchet and Clank. Exactly, they want to. Say, I want to shoot really big yeah. guns. I want to play with my friends online. I don't care about single player. I want to play multiplayer. You're saying games. that the the cool thing to play is now Call of Duty, realistic shooters, and you know. Minecraft I'm not saying that's stuff. the cool thing to do at all. I'm saying that I think that a lot of younger people would say that. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. Do that. That's what I meant. Yeah. The 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 demographic for Call of Duty and Minecraft has got lower. And which means there's no place for these kind of action puzzle platforms. I think a the lot people of people who want to play these games are like twenty thirty. Yeah, this is the thing: the people who want to play old. these games, ironically enough, are probably the people with their own disposable income to make this happen and to mm. pay for these games. Whereas what obviously used to be the case with the games industry was, I need to market the crap out of this thing so that kids will tell their parents, "Buy yeah. me this game for Christmas." Buy me this game for Christmas. So, yeah, I think it's a combination of things. In short. I am all for another Ratchet and Clank esque game yeah. that I can play on PC. Um, Would love it. Whether it will happen anytime soon or not, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, going on to our next topic, uh, there's been a rumor of a PlayStation 4K, uh, like a beefier PS4. It was rumored to be up to 4K resolution. Before we go into this at all, do you think that will be the name, the PS4K? <laughs> no. And would you be happy with it calling That's it that? If it was able to run 4K, yeah, fine. That makes sense, I guess. It's like all the people that were like are probably quite annoyed when the Xbox One came out and it wasn't <laughs> yeah. the Xbox 720, for example. Yeah. But at least, one, at least one players, thing, they were named properly, um, though. Yeah. One, one thing about the PS4K, if they put a Ratchet and Clank game on it, you know, I'm in. That's <laughs> yeah, how definitely. you get me. Because they've... Ratchet and Clank has been one of the staple PS4 exclusives. Like, I was surprised that if I go on like the most um, the most up and coming, most sought after PS4 exclusives, Ratchet and Clank's like number one. Mm. Everyone who buys a PS4 wants Ratchet and Clank. But uh, basically, what's happening with this is the uh, PS4 4K has kind of been confirmed because I think it was Eurogamer and kind of leaked this and they confirmed it with Sony but Sony was kind of like no 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 we're definitely not <laughs> making one but it was kind of semi confirmed that they were yeah. Xbox has said that it's retarded and they will not be doing it but we think if the PS4 will do it they'll be like right we need yeah. to compete <laughs> with the PS4 but um, recently uh, I read that um, Greg uh, Zeshuk the co-founder of um, of Bioware he said um, on the room PS4, he said it'd be a gigantic pain in the ass uh, that flies in the face of the purpose of consoles because basically um, the point of consoles is you're on a level set playing field. Everyone's yeah, got the same because they already have, I can target this specific graphics processor and CPU because they already have to develop for the two consoles. They got to do the Wii uh, and computers. Computers are the hard one because there's so many yeah. variations. And then you add two active consoles added onto this. He said that this would be the most backward things to do for developers because uh, 
it would be so hard to develop for two active consoles because the variation would be huge. The example he gave, he said, it's funny, there's actually some stories behind that. For example, the original Xbox, Microsoft actually had multiple different DVD drives, and by this he meant they have a huge variation of performances on for each different drive. They didn't actually tell anyone that the Xbox had different drives on different um, models of it, which meant it was really hard to develop for, and actually, it actually impacted the performance based on which DVD drive you had. I wonder if that ever affected the PS3, because you could change your hard mm. drive in your PS3 to whatever you'd like. I wonder what, this is I the original is, Xbox. And I guess, again, for the PS3, it's probably before like, yeah. you install things to hard drives and rather. Yeah. You still have Blu-ray. I wonder if they just point. use standard codes and but, things to now, so it doesn't. It shouldn't really matter too much. Like, do, does, does the game that you play on PC care about the disk drive if, in, if you ever actually install a game through a disk? Well, the, the, it, it cares about it for like fetching fast resources for SSD kind of based off. So if yeah. it wants to go and get textures from memory and load mm. those in, then it cares about it. That's why the PC is going to be such a pain in the ass to a, yeah, yeah. Um, make, in fact, this comes back to sort of VR content as well. Making content for VR is hard enough, which is why it's, uh, so many people basically get told, target it to one piece of hardware, which is the minimum spec, and then hope for the best for the, the the beefier stuff so mm. a lot of developers I've seen that are making VR content test it on 970s with like i5s etc because that's the target one that they've told people yeah. going after so it's it's similar to what this 4k stuff would be like the biggest gripe I have with this is they're gonna try and beef up the system to run it at 4k but I assume it's gonna be running at 4k 30 30F, 4 well the PS4 gets 40 FPS is kind of there. Yeah, but it's also going to have to push more more pixels. Well, it probably There's be no way it's going to get. 40. Okay, it's going to be 4K 30 FPS. I would rather have a PS4 that ran 60 FPS over 4K. Yeah, what I your agree. thoughts, Tony? Um, well, yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be great. I know it's like, and, and there's some games now where you can, like, on actual consoles, you can like change the settings to like run at higher textures or higher FPS. Like, be honest, you just look at it. You just need an. There are extra, need options um, really. Well, yeah, so I think The Division has PC based yeah. options mm. in it where you can toggle on certain particles, etc. Um, in order I... to see different things. In fact, I went around to. Yeah, it had, it had computer like settings. Yeah, I was at KT's and I was looking at Ben's edition. I was like, this looks mm. weird. And then he said, oh, there are some settings in the tunnel, but I don't bother with it. I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, I would. I just think every game kind of I... needs that in some way, like so you can make it run like, more FPS if you really want that. You can give up graphic fidelity for frames. Yeah, that's a yeah. choice PC gamers have. It's not. I'm, a choice I personally, I'm fine with 30 yeah. FPS. This is the thing I've and never got. Textures. Hmm. See, this is the thing I've never got. Right? Anyone that says that PC and console are different is <laughs> really kind of wrong in a way. No. Right? A console is literally a PC. Yeah. It is yeah. a standardized a hard PC drive with an operating system with a graphics card plugged into it, but it is the same across the board, right? Mm. That's the same thing with like Apple versus um, PC. Yeah. Right? PCs are pretty hard to update and launch Windows stuff for because everyone's got a different monitor and everything else. For Mac, it's a case of, well, I know that I've got these five products that have the exact yeah. same things in them, and there you go, there's the update. Same thing for the iPhone compared to Android devices because every Android phone is completely different. That's one, well, that's one the thing, they're like, consoles don't get viruses. <laughs> It's just I, for me personally, if I I'm not a console gamer, I probably won't ever be a mm. console gamer unless you get a Wii U. Of course. Well, that's <laughs> obviously. I mean, the thing that really drives me mad is the fact that there are so many console. Well, there are less these days, but the fact that there are in fact any console exclusives. That's I the only reason. Things. I because yeah. going back to my point. I'd only buy a PS4 for Ratchet and Clank. I'd only get a uh, Wii U because I want all the Nintendo because of the Mario games yeah. yep. and all that yep. stuff. I have no interest in getting anything other than what my um, money can buy. And for the money I can pay for a, um, a PS4 or an Xbox One, I can build out of either... You know, I can either build a relatively good gaming PC or I can build a damn good second-hand parts yeah, gaming yeah. PC. Mm -hmm. I would much rather spend that money and have 60 frames per second, which yeah. is what my monitors can do, than sit in front of a television with stuff that looks good once it's had a loading screen for about 
two minutes and so then runs at 60 30. frames a second isn't asking for much when people have 120 hertz 144 yep. hertz monitors yep. i'm starting so to see a baseline like ones of 60 frames per second isn't asking that much i, nope. I honestly believe it, you know especially for vr go, going back exactly 90 frames per second's got to be the standard for go, VR. Go, going back because you have to split the frames yeah. between two render on each eye mm-hmm Going back to our main point okay. though, like you said, like the uh, co-founder of Bioware said it was a pain in the ass. I think looking at a consumer instead of like a, a developer, obviously it's kind of good. Obviously we want more options, make it either 60 or 30 FPS, depending on what graphical fidelity you want. But obviously you want a beefier PlayStation, obviously. But I don't understand like why when when they as when a, they brought as, out the PS4 a, though why didn't they just make the hardware better so it had like the the standards that you'd expect for the next generation instead they just kind of subpar too much because the they have was, to yeah they, they have to mass produce a system that's standardized that and, people will buy because it isn't the cost expensive. the cost of the the cost of the product gives them a profit from the yeah no, that's that's fine. Over. But like, if you're if you're having to jump up, so like, so you you bought your PS3, then had to get the PS3 slim because your PS3 died. Mm-hmm. You then have to then get a PS4, and there's not much difference between a PS3 slim and a PS4. Like, because if they're bringing out a new one, they have to upgrade it again. So isn't this like not the point whatsoever? The point mm-hmm. is there's meant to be big jumps, then you can stick with it for seven years. Well, let's just say hardware getting upgraded on consoles is only good for a PC gamer because it brings up the actual standard yeah, of all yeah. games that are released. Yeah. The difficulty is with um, consoles is the time at which everyone decided they needed a refresh didn't happen to coincide with no. the 4K boom. The but 4K no, but boom I don't, I don't, is actually that's fine. happening. But it okay. was on the horizon. But even, even ignoring 4K, happening. though, I just expect it, everything to run at 1080. Everything's downscaled. I don't, it's not even yeah. 1080. Basically, what's happened is Sony's gone, shit, everybody wants 4K, everyone wants VR, we can't keep going on with 40 yeah. frames per second. Mm. We, we need to support 4K, and we also need to support enough frames that you can actually use VR without feeling physically yeah, sick. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Morpheus has got something to do with this. If If... if is that the Sony yeah. VR? If PlayStation's the, VR one is Morpheus saying, was like the code name. Yeah, exactly. I can't remember what it's actually because I think it's like just literally PlayStation VR or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but the the need that they're looking at now to go actually we really need to be able to push higher frame rates and not care about textures as much. Um, though really for VR you need both. Um, is probably one of the things that's causing this because that Morpheus screen is not going to have a 4K display in it, mm. but by having a graphics processing unit in it, that can actually push 4K at a decent spec and therefore more than likely push 1080p at a very good spec is what's going to really help with VR stuff. So I think that might have something to do with why PlayStation has had these rumors about bringing out a 4K model. The, the move controllers actually yeah. make sense now that they've developed VR. Yeah. Because for a long time, yeah. these motion controls were kind Fantastic. of like, what the hell is going on with these? And then in the space of being able to render them in virtual reality, it actually gives you a reference point. The it's second like, you look at actually, this makes sense. a Vive or whatever, they yeah. pick yeah. up the controls for the first time, they go, I can see these in front of me. I know uh, this is great. Jim, Jim Sterling made a video on this recently about how Sony supports its system and just said, basically, um, is this system even going to get support? Because, you know, so many, like the PSP Go and the Vita and stuff, have all been just chucked away and there's no support for them anymore. They almost, they, they practically chucked away the move as soon as it was gone and they realized, actually, we can use this for VR. Mm. We're going to start supporting this again. Yep. So I, I don't know how quickly you'd want to buy in a PlayStation 4.5, considering how quick the lifespan of these consoles is rapidly becoming to actually keep up with most modern systems, yeah. virtual reality and 4K. Maybe wait for a PS5, to be honest with you, <laughs> unless you desperately want to play VR or you desperately want to play in 4K Let's face by it, a computer. If you, if you desperately want to play VR, you have seen that VR has been coming mm. and you must have by now put a, set aside some funds to build your you know, your $1,000 or $600 gaming PC to buy yeah. your $800 headset and then to buy all the titles that come with it. Mm. If you are looking for VR and you're looking at the PlayStation, Right now, as it is, you're in the wrong you're in the wrong place because 
but some I know some people out there will be like I don't want to have to have all the house of a PC I just want a box and plug it in and it works yeah, I know that will be I know that will be a selling factor for those people and I'm sure it'll be an interesting experience but um, how many titles did we actually see come out and make use of the PlayStation I when that was first around mm. basically none how many people you could have you, you could take us you could have your driver photo you could in burnout paradise in burnout like, paradise just take a photo of your face yay my driver license uh, again both of us just did a thumbs up there to <laughs> something that's not recording us <laughs> however um i think that vr is not going to have that same kind of uh feel to it right i don't think vr is going to be the same as the playstation i that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying mm. it's going to be like it's, it's it's here and then it's suddenly gone um I think that VR is going to be a very big thing, um, but I don't think that VR is going to be able to come on in leaps and bounds on a console device. Not yet. Because it Not will this have generation. that core subset. Yep. Say, for example, right now, the thing that will be pushing NVIDIA to make for the, um, like, the GTX 1080, for example, right now, they'll be going, how can we extract as much stuff as possible to get VR to run smoothly? Mm -hmm. And if Sony are now looking at the existing GPUs and saying, can we plug this into this to make it a bit better? They're just going to have to do the same thing two years down the line because people will see what's happening on PCs and they will go, wow, those textures look crisp on my headset and mm -hmm. this, the frames per second are there. Whereas they'll look at the PS4, 4K or whatever it's called, they'll put their headset on, they go, this is running okay, but I have a limited amount of things I can run. Because let us let's let me put another point out there. The reason why VR has been doing so well is because the amount of developers that could just pick up, start developing for the Rift or the, the Vive or whatever, there's like native toolkits in the yeah. just drop in and anyone can start coding for the, it. The Oculus was like, here's a dev kit, anyone can buy this. Yeah, and anyone start making experience. Like you for bought it. the DK2. Yep. And you you weren't a developer, you just nope. wanted to test out the Just system. wanted to play with it. And it a, a friend of mine, uh, Ash, he was making a game already. He just managed mm. to basically drag in one code library and the camera which he was using was able to turn into a Rift supported one. It was that easy. However, for the for the PlayStation, whole other ball game. You yeah. need dedicated PlayStation dev machines. You need um, licenses to even yeah. run the software to test on the console. You're not going to get the same number of experiences you would on the PS4. What, what's kind of funny? That you would on the PC, but and not only that, from the the costing standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Because the amount of free experiences for VR on the PC will be massive. The number of paid experiences. Yeah. on um, the PlayStation will be small and they will still cost. So there, there'll be a massive dichotomy there. Go ahead, Tony. I was saying, this is funny, though. I, I, would, I don't know if this is for most games, but most games, they almost kind of emulate the game they're going to make for the console on a PC to then work on a, on a console. It's just kind of mm -hmm. like a, a really awkward yeah, to do. Whenever you go to E3, they're just massive. They just literally have... A, Towers, which are their dev machines that they've been using, yeah. that are emulating an Xbox controller and just mapping it. There's, there's, there's a lot of hype for VR, but I'm someone who's used VR and I'm just not sold. Mm. I just, I, I like the idea of the Vive. I really want to try that out because it looks really good, and I think they've addressed a lot of issues with VR because they actually allow you to emulate room hands scale and VR. Stuff. <coughs> and they don't even have that much movement. There's room walking, but it's mainly teleporting around with one of the things. Because mm. in a lot of the demos, you just teleport around. Because every time I've tried an Oculus uh, game or demo, like I, I tried um, Subnautica, instantly sick. Like even video game cabinet, the virtual reality, I walked down the virtual, I worked into the virtual video game uh, cabinet room, I felt sick. And the best VR experience I've ever had was a game called. Um, if you look this up on the Oculus uh, store, it's uh, you will probably die. Basically, you're a secret agent, and you um, you're in your nemesis's car, and you have to try and drive it out of this plane. But uh, it's stuck. You need to so It's kind of like a logic puzzle. You kind of have to s solve some stuff and do some other stuff, and you basically you just pull the items closer to you, you scroll it. One thing I found with the Oculus, it's really hard to read things unless they're next to your yep. face. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to like use your mouse to drag things in and actually read them, and you can freeze them in the air, 
and move them about and use that information differently, which is really nice. But um, yeah, VR. What did I expect? <laughs> Virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be good. You so. Full disclosure: My uh, HTC Vive arrives in May. The you'll you'll no doubt have seen on the internet people are already getting theirs because the US and everything gets theirs shipped early, but the UK doesn't get theirs shipped until mm. um, it's, it's early May. And I think there's already been problems. You were saying just before we started recording this, there's already been problems. They were they were sending they were sending out orders not in sequence that they were because they were doing a first come first serve sort of thing and they were just giving them out of sequence which was really strange but yeah I think we kind of said everything we're going to say about 4K yeah. and the Playstation yeah. rumors yeah. if it exists do you think so just quickly do you think it would be a good thing would you support it I, I think it is good for a consumer yeah. to have the option to um, choose to play here's one thing that I, I wanted to mention about this I just remembered actually um the option to play 4K content itself, like mm. Netflix in 4K with, um, say, Daredevil, for example, that's now in 4K. The ability to play that content, that's really good news for a consumer um, because most of that content is recorded in 30 frames or 24 frames a second anyway yeah. because that's just how the television industry works. So that's a great plus. And I think that would be a good selling point for Sony if they did do this because they would say, we now support um, Sony TV, for example, or something like that that can deliver yeah. this 4K content. That's quite good. Because some of these people will be thinking, well, I wanted to get a PS4 anyway. This one supports 4K. Why not? Um, but from I'm, the standpoint of whether it's going to be good for um, developers, probably not. Think, and also um, good for people that have already bought the PS4. It's kind of a yeah. Case it's like really, really awkward, awkward if you already bought one. So what are you supposed to do then? Yeah. T Tony, quickly, good, good. Yes, I'm again. Good, yes, yeah, awkward for developers. In principle, good for uh, consumers, but yeah, really awkward if you've already bought one. One thing quickly I will say, and then we'll move on, is that uh, even though TV and stuff, you know, 22 frames per second, uh, Twitch streams are moving more towards 60 frames, mm -hmm. 1080p 60 frames per second. Yep. I know League of Legends uh, competitive is streamed at 60 frames per second because you really need to be able to see that kind of frame fidelity. Yep. And I know even people like Kripari and Stream Tarstone, he does all these videos at 1080p, um, 60. 60 frames per second. He said his files have got huge now and it takes him forever to render it, but he would rather have these high frame fidelity. It's a, it's a, it's a contrast between the type of content. If you're creating mm. video game content, you basically have to be doing things at 60 yeah. frames per second because mm. like Frankie on PC at 1080p, for example, he's a good YouTuber that makes yeah. this kind of content and um, his stuff is crisp and it always looks good. Then you look at um, something like, for example, Linus Tech Tips, yeah. and they render all of their footage. They they record they most of their footage it yeah. from 4K. Yeah. So they take all of their footage and then they upload it. Um, but they just, they, they film a lot of stuff at 1080p, but then they yeah. or 4K, and then they downscale it to 1080p, but keep it with a higher bit rate, for example. Yeah. And that's because the content's different, right? A lot of the time they're not showing off the latest games running; they're showing you physical hardware, yeah. and you don't need that kind of frame rate. So it's a it's it's a split difference. There is a need for it in consumers' gaming yeah. stuff, but there isn't. We will move on ones. to everyone's favorite part of this. It's show. my favorite. It's Toby's wish. List. This is my favorite part. I just get to shout at Toby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just going to click on this one. I like that already. Oh, good. I wonder if it's got my favourite so, tag. So, I'll just read this Tell out quickly. Tell me it's got my favourite tag. It does. It's Female got, protagonist! It's the best tag. De Dreamfall Chapters, the highly anticipated follow-up adventure... Uh, to the adventure classic, sorry. The longest journey and Dreamfall... Dreamfall Chapters is an epic, sobic, story-driven adventure and choices. Is this... Cyberpunk Tony, <laughs> is this a point and click? Uh... Set in parallel worlds, a cyberpunk vi vision. How is a cyberpunk? I've not seen a single thing. Well, this is the future, Toby. This is a cyberpunk vision of the future. <laughs> uh, a magical fantasy realm. Your purchase includes all. <laughs> I'm so, so this confused kinda, by what I'm witnessing. This kind of looks like the Witcher, a, maybe. No. I was going to say, it's kind of like those um, Tales for Borderlands yeah. or the Walking yeah, Dead games yeah, where you. it's kind of a story-driven, you kind of make choices and it affects the story. These games actually very good for VR. 
Mm. These sort of story driven games where you're not moving a lot and you're just looking at action. I'm going to be honest with you. That scene. <laughs> I was, yeah. not, I'm looking at the images, right? I've been a while since I've added I don't know when I added this to my wish yeah. list. It's, I don't remember this game. I want to be honest with you. Um, 2014. Uh, when, yeah. Released. But right. where's see, the now, cyberpunk? See, now I'm more <laughs> it's just like, cyberpunk. It looks like The Witcher the second 1. The trailer just started running, Toby, and now I can see cyberpunk. <laughs> I am guessing that this is where the whole episodic. Yeah, yeah and oh, they've also got, they've got a quote from Kutaku. Let's, let's oh, should we get that? Hold on, wait for it. Wait for it to come up. So it does say that it's set in parallel worlds. So I can understand. Yeah. Where it's saying if it's got cyberpunk, but also the magical fantasy. Yeah, it's a bit interesting. Kutaku, that now is the time to begin squeeing and flailing with joy. Oh, nice! That's some good journalism. <laughs> Uh, here's, some, here's some actual journalism. There's an ab ambition for chapters that I haven't expected. Rock, paper, shotgun. Well, I think are one of the good guys out there who actually yeah. are journalists. I, I did not know the rock, paper, shotgun's byline was PC gaming since 1873. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably a stab at the... Wasn't there a the game? The, was the the New Order 18? Or was that 1887? I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> so, first things first, it's got the tag female. Yeah, that's, that's clearly the reason why I did it. Everyone's favourite genre of game. <laughs> I'm more intrigued by this now I've seen this second trailer, in fairness. Yeah. Because the first one was basically saying that this was... You know, well, the, the byline was saying it was so but I saw none of that whatsoever. Having watched this now, I'm more intrigued because... It looks pretty I, interesting. I, I it's think weird. I, I, it I, starts off and you're like, "This is fantasy." Yeah, I can't like and that. Then it's that cyberpunk. And you're like, it's what almost the got a dishonoured art style to it, which is weird. I don't know what I make of this. It's story-driven adventure, female protagonist, sci-fi. It's yeah. I'm okay I, with this, this being is on something your wish list, but I'm not okay <laughs> with the fact that it's twenty-four pounds. Uh, it's after it's been out for it. Uh, two years. Does this? I think your per it says your purchase includes all. I think yeah. maybe saying it gives you all the episodes now. For yeah. Twenty four pounds. I'm not. What's sure. the special edition? Because I haven't seen any gameplay. I have no idea. I've yeah. Again, I, I saw a tiny bit of gameplay. It did look like the kind of excellent like, writing. It looked like Mystery. the um, the AAA level writing. It looked like the wheel you get in um, Bioware's. Um, Mass Effect, like at one point there was like two questions either side, and that was basically it. So, so I'm I'm okay with this being on your wish list because I've never heard of it, and I'm surprised because it looks like a game that more people would have. Well, I just, I just want to say like, about. what is it's this? very it's positive, very yeah. positive yeah. reviews as well. Yeah, it's definitely up my street. Like, it's something I'm I'm, I'm quite right. interested in. Because I'm, I'm having to go into YouTube to yeah, actually I'm so find games now. Because yeah, not the, only, the, store the two page trailers is not we that just great. watched, you also notice we are now in a completely different environment. There's a child, and it's just a house. So you actually None get to that control, was in those games. You actually get to control characters and move them around. You kind of pick up clues. It's kind of like a. I've never been more confused. <sighs> this doesn't. This doesn't fit any it's other a, genres. It's I've adventure seen. and story rich. Yeah. It's got Steam <laughs> trading cards. It's fantastic. I'm I'm okay. Can, with can, you can I just say, Joe? Anything? Joe. Oh, Joe. I'm so full intri controller support. Yeah. Full controller full support. Controller and that's very support. important in in a point and click game. Yeah. <laughs> I might even add this. I don't use a Steam wish list, and I might add this to mine because I'm so confused by. Yeah, it. I'm gonna add it to my wish list because I'm confused, okay. not because I'm. I'm not impressed. I'm, I'm just interested. intrigued. I'm just... Like how in one episode he's like, "Oh yes, I'm in the middle of the medieval times," and then in one it's like this dystopian yeah, par parallel you know, world, sci-fi future, parallel worlds. But what is it? I'd, it's very I, confusing. Yeah. Book five revealed. It must be going on for a while. Yeah. Who's the publisher? Who's the publisher? Is it Telltale no. or? Publisher and developer Telltale both X. Red Thread Games. Uh, publisher Red Thread, Red Thread, Thread Games. Games. Okay. Right, Have most of most of oh, the no, recommended well, reviews, um, they've at least played like twenty two hours, so it seems quite a That's long okay. game. So what? So there's been four chapters so far, so that's uh, that's not too bad. 
This is the third game in like the series to start with the longest the journey and continued in Dreamfall, the longest journey. The longest journey is a wonderful point and click adventure game. Yeah, it seems kind of like point and click yeah. story driven adventure where you're not really playing the game, yeah, the game's you're playing just, you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with no, I really like these things though. This, I really like the, them. The reason why we picked this was purely based on the fact that there was a pair of female eyes in the thumbnail staring at us. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. And I'm glad that we did because I am super confused now, but in a good way. Well, I still don't know who she is. <laughs> Obviously she's Dreamfall. She is the character her, Dreamfall. Yep, and she's got a good friend. Do you want to yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chapters. Okay. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I hope Toby recently Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan has been added to Steam. I hope that's on your wish list. Uh, also, Tony, I want you to buy that game and play it and then report. Back. Okay, because I, I, I am super at, at some confused. point maybe when I get money, I might do that. What? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, I've clicked on something because it's called Roundabout. What? The, I'm just more confused. <laughs> oh, have you not seen Roundabout? Um, no. No. Because okay, so the, I immediately clicked it because I was like, is this about... Li like, no, 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 no. It's an f and I game. the link and I'm presented with two women, one with an emu on her arm, I believe that is. Right, you've chosen another female protagonist. With a skeleton. Well done. <laughs> Let's go to the store page. Yeah. Right, so anyone who's listening, just read out the description of the game. Okay, so roundabout. Drive a constantly spinning limousine around town. Roundabout is a 70s B-movie game where you pick up passengers, find secret collectibles, Actually, take on dangerous missions, and fall in love in a far-out open-world puzzle adventure, all while driving a revolving limo. <laughs> Very positive reviews. Now I, I, I'm seeing gameplay of this game and it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh -huh. it it's an FMV it game. So it's like a can't. blast from the past. <laughs> Can I just say the fact that it's into the fact that it's yeah, the fact that it's interspersed with that like seventies culture yeah. in the back, with with nothing outside the back, just a woman looking over her shoulder talking. <laughs> I love how it's just spinning around. And it's just, platformer as well. It's just killing people it's as it spins around. The limo is jumping. <laughs> as well. It reminds me not of another game called uh, Omnibus, which oh yeah, is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the usage of stock cheesy 70s yeah. footage from like I, Knight Rider. I really like cheesy B movie happy. stuff, so this is what Tony, it's Tony, right, again. Hello, Toby. <laughs> Toby, I would. That's two for yeah. two. Like this 11 quid. It's gone on the wish list. You've already convinced <laughs> It's 11 pounds. Already. It has the female protagonist tag. Hang on, Steam trading cards. Yes! It's got Steam trading cards, it's got full controller support. There's even a demo, which you never see anymore. And I love demos because you can actually try the game and see if it runs this in your system. Some of this looks so confusing. I He's imagine... murdering a soccer field of people. <laughs> Tell me this. Does this game have achievements? It does. Yeah. <laughs> if there is levels for like completing without killing anyone, um, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know that what is going Joe, on? our good friend Michael already owns this game. He's the one that pointed this out to me and it is a fantastic game. Of course game. he does. We have the Michael thumbs up for this game. You can repair your limo. <laughs> I'm just. I don't even need to watch the trailer anymore. <laughs> this is amazing. Total biscuit. What is? What did TB say? This is a game where you drive a revolving limo, enjoy questionable cutscenes. It's a driving puzzle game and a boo movie. A unique combination. Yes, I would say There's that a, is. Yeah, it's recommended by TB and Jim yeah. Sterling. Sold. Okay. Wow. Do we want to do one more, see if we yep. can make it three for three? <laughs> Final game. See if, let's try and pick one that looks absolute shit. Let's see if we can find a shit on the wish list. <laughs> there's many, uh, there's, there's much shit on that? the wish list. What's what? Point to it. Princess um, Evangeline? Is that Evangile? I didn't know that there was Assassin's Creed Chronicles. China! That's a thing? China! I don't know. Well, we're going on Princess of... It's anime oh, bullshit. I, all, I am already sold. <laughs> Princess Evangeline even... 18 plus installation. Oh, damn. There's, an all, there's, Tony. A, Tony's getting, there's an all ages version. Tony's getting his in his there's head, an all ages version. Oh, okay, yeah, but... Complete transparency, just based on the fact of the incredibly Moe looking... <laughs> I'm already sold, so... Can I just say as well? It's... 
at the question of gender integration at a private school, a curious series of events leads to our hero becoming the only boy at prestigious girls' academy. I love games like this. I love any game that has something to do with a gender swap in it. It is always an incredibly interesting line <laughs> of investigation. And the fact of the matter, right, that this game has not stooped so low as to use the female protagonist... <laughs> Like main point of line is like oh god I can already see them in <laughs> compromising positions not wearing any clothes oh it's just it's just etchy though there's no there's definitely no porn here there's no hentai it's, it's all etchy it's a prestigious girl academy but ninety nine percent of the girls are against integration oh wow <laughs> Princess Evangeline and Toby has the all ages <laughs> version thank God Toby <laughs> have you installed the eighteen plus edition he's watched this he doesn't own it. Oh, okay, sorry. So, would you install the 18 <laughs> Plus edition or are you going to go for the all is, is, is there one on Steam? Oh, oh God, especially I'm in those confused. ones. They're cleaning, is there one on, it, I don't know. They're cleaning the pool right now. It, it was listed on the previous page. I think maybe it's a mod. Or, uh, I tell you what it'll be. Uh, I tell you what it'll be. It'll be available yeah. elsewhere. It'll have been a port yeah. from like a Nico Duga or something like that. And they'll have put it on Steam, and someone will have find a, found a way to download the source files from another site and mm. apply them to the Steam version. That's what it will be. <laughs> I don't know about this one. I've already put it not interested, <laughs> Toby, because there's no controller support, and that's very integral for my anime bullshit games. So, <laughs> so you've, you, well, you knew this going in. We set off Joe's anime <laughs> bullshit detector. But I am actually slightly intrigued by this, purely based on the fact that it's got a gender swap mechanic to it. It's not gender swap, he just goes to a school full of girls. No, it says he's, uh, it said before. It said, da 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 da. Becoming the oh, only boy. Oh, the only boy. Oh, no, okay. Ah, oh, then maybe he's, I'm not so sold. He's just the boy that goes to an all-girls school. That's not a curious event. I was expecting it to be a female protagonist well, that became a dude. Oh, I, I, I think we all know why it's on my wish list, lesbians. though. So. No, it would have been a dude and a gal. Besides, I am all for the Yuri goggles. <laughs> You've no idea what any of that means. No. It's okay, you must wear Yuri goggles when playing games. It's the way forward. Who's, who's Yuri? <laughs> no, Yuri's not a person. It's. A I, I have um uh, two two. I have two worry. curators. Uh, Japan Ban uh, Bonanza I, and oh, and Waifu Hunter. They both recommend this game. Manga gamer. I don't <laughs> have those curators, Toby. So I can't see. <laughs> What's the art? Uh, oh, you can need a Pentium news. 3 processor. Or <laughs> GG. So bad news. It's only single player. I didn't, but I didn't know is... games existed that still had requirements for Pentium processors. Well, it's a visual novel, isn't it? I guess it's not going to be high. It's got Steam trading card games. It doesn't have full controller I wonder support. if the Steam trading cards are just all the pictures of anime girls. Damn, why did that? That link was useless. It didn't take you where it <laughs> It just really shows you all the games of Steam trading cards. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid I don't think that you've made it this three This guy has 241 hours on record. <laughs> oh yeah, he's probably trying to sleep with every girl in the game in every different situation. And he's wrote in a fucking essay. <laughs> Do you not understand game? how much free time these people must have? He's got like a super Japanese name, don't even know, Do you know what, what it says. Do you know what the last part is? The last part says Muse. And do you know why this is sad? Because I've watched the anime that that's from. That's from the School Idol Project. I don't know where that Boom. is. Boom. Get wrecked. Oh. You nearly made it free for free. I'm yeah, but fine with I this, feel like I'm not no. saying it's something I, feel like I would I can... buy, but Joe might have just died slightly. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I can, I can protect myself. I can... I can... I can explain why it's on my wish this list. This woman's just said the throbbing in my chest. <laughs> the throbbing in my chest won't stop. I'll give you a smile through the magic of courage forever. Okay. It's just so Hold much on. Is broken there music? English. Is there music playing? Oh god, turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Onadoni Shimadoni playing in the swimming pool with no clothes on. Do do. Oh my What's god. What's that? She does like she's know. been raped. <laughs> to be honest, I think someone should call I'm the out. Cops. You're out. I'm out. Oh, no. I was sold and then I wasn't. I'm afraid it's definitely not three for three anymore. <laughs> it's two for three. To, I, I instantly clicked on this and I went not interested straight away. Whereas I, I looked at this and went, it's Princess anime bullshit. Evan it's, it's on my wish list. Evangeli. I have to give it a not interested because it's the all age version, I'm yeah. afraid. That's Had it what been it is. the 18 plus version, we'd have been in there. Right yeah. Now. 
But unfortunately, Toby, they're not naked enough for me. Yep, that's that's, that's, that's going to be a no. Apparently, there's a patch online. I don't know if that interests you, but. Oh, good. Yeah. We I'm saw. We interested saw. now, Toby. I'll just download yeah. the demo right now and I'll have a play of it. Whilst I'm learning Japanese. Yeah. But uh, that's, f- that's Toby's wish list, so we'll just have final thoughts. I like bacon. Really? Toby, final thoughts. Anything you dying to say before we end? No, not, not, not particularly. Anything you want to uh, talk about? I was going to say, I'm... I'm... Uh, you, no, no, you, you said... What? Sorry, go on. No, no, we... I was just going to say, you, you wanted... You oh, thought yeah. the Overwatch trailer was a bit cringy, yeah. you said. Which one? The uh, Recall or Alive? Uh, alive. Ugh. The one where Tracer is playing against the French woman. That's just... Her, the, the Tracer's English accent just oh, tilts it's, it's not the, <laughs> you're right I love, no, I love it's, every, not, it's not that that, is the, that is the worst thing that's not the only thing it's like the, the conversations they have the pretentiousness when they start the trailer the way that the characters talk the rest of it is brilliant like the I'm, action is great the look of it is great I'm enjoying yeah. the lore I'll give you that it's, like, I really yeah. into Overwatch like the Winston yeah trailer, yeah I that's great really I've cool. watched that that's great this one was really Especially cringy. Especially the fact they appear to be going on at the same time, because if you look, if, if you look at some of the characters that are like in the crowd or whatever, and then you look at the like teasers that they've done for like Mercy's one, for example, they're the same characters. So there's definitely some going to be some like almost background characters mm. with decent lore as well. So think like Miss Pauling from the TF2 universe. I don't know how fo- closely you two have followed that, but like I know, I know, I know what's going. The nine main yeah. mercs, mm. but then you've got Miss like, Pauling and the Miss Pauling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I'm quite in- excited to see where um, Blizzard's going with this because obviously they've got these like shorts that they're doing, but they're also doing a whole series. I think they said. Well, they're already integrating the Overwatch characters and other stuff now because you can already get. Um, yeah, there's them. already the Tracer yeah. Hero and Heroes of the yep. Storm. Uh, I know in Diablo you can get. Um, I'm trying to remember the the angel character you can get because oh, in 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 Diablo you can get wings by pre-ordering games are doing like huge feats of strength achievements right. and they've already added her wings as a pre-order bonus for the yeah that's mercy for the extra special collector bullshit no I, I, okay you know that's go, going back to what I was I, saying about it though yep yeah, it, it, I, I, it's a great it's great the animation is great I just still found that this, the, the, the speech yeah. was just it made me cringe so much mm, yeah I'm yeah. excited to see where they're going with it I am um, I'm less than infused by the voice acting <laughs> yeah. but I think it might get memorised for some of that I think um, I just can't wait to play the game because recently they just added a rank system oh, and I really want to play, play that so much. Uh, for anyone that wants to play the 5th of um, uh, May I think it, 5th of May is the open beta if you pre-purchase yeah. it you get it on the 3rd because I know my friend uh, Martin said you, you, I, I could play it with him because it, as soon as you pre-purchase it you get an extra guest pass for you and your friend for two days and then you go into the open beta for a couple of days before the game comes out so uh, yeah that's final thoughts uh, ending the show in plugs I have been uh, Joe aka uh, Scorn you can check me out on my YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash Scorn uh, it might be Scorn 2000 just type Scorn into YouTube they're not going to be many um, check out my new roguelite series that is a th- that is a clickbait that thumbnail is an, right it, there it is <laughs> but um, I'll just check for you quickly because I'm I don't know just such because I'm really proud of my uh, rogue legacy uh, yeah, and the Splunk one I think they're really good I've d- and my Ziggurat one it's really good as well. I feel like they've slow the editing slowly became better as I did them more and more. Because mm. the Rogue Legacy one, Daniel keeps telling me to put music, music. <laughs> put music under me speaking. So the Rogue Legacy actually has a little track on it that I got from the YouTube free non copyright library, and I think it sounds pretty nice. So go on my channel, check that out. Uh, I uh, I post on Twitter. I post all the podcasts and my videos on there. I recently did predictions for the. Uh, League of Legends LCS if you're interested in that I tweet about esports and shit uh, Daniel is you go ahead you're the Punisher oh, I am you won't find me on YouTube anymore you probably find me at McBrace I have been down Brace 
Uh, if you ever see me streaming anywhere, I'll probably be at Twitch underscore McBrace. You uh, don't stream. I used to. <laughs> I don't anymore. Because one thing I learned quite quickly is that people... Do you know, people have watched me play Awesome Knots, but that's mm. actually only by virtue of the fact that no one streams Awesome Knots, and I don't even play that anymore. So, yeah, I've been Dan Brace, and of course we've been talking to our colleague Toby. Yeah, I, I'm Tony. still pre-anonymous. His name? Okay, I should probably, should probably mention this. At this point, we should clear this up, yeah. Toby, Toby is... His real name is Toby, but I always call him Tony, because it's short for Tones and RT. Yeah, that's my name. And don't ask that, me why that's I my call name. him that. Tones at RT. That's that's your online yeah. alias. is Tones yeah. at RT. But I don't. You can't so, really um, find me. To at end this point. the episode, I'm gonna. Yeah, you have to find him <laughs> the through ghost me. And a phantom. But the Danny Dyer tweet this week, as can as, I, as can I do the Danny Dyer. You tweet have to try and voice. do his voice. Oh, Dave. Okay, hang on, hang on. Oh. It's become a tradition that we read out a Danny Dyer tweet because his Twitter is so funny. So take it away. Final message, Daniel. Go ahead. Danny Dyer. How dare you? Nothing wrong with spaghetti. Oops, little mug. Bins as if I've got eyes like an eagle. And that was uh, that was Danny Dyer's tweet. Well, uh, if you want to know context, uh, follow him on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Good. yeah, like he was Mate. in the room. Yeah. Well, th- thanks for listening and watching. So uh, that's the end of the pod. That's bye. the end of the podcast. Uh, that you'll see us in about yeah, two months. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. bye. bye.